Chato Hayek 2000, Bach Area Building 3, Aerial Shot, August 8th. Chato Hayek Building 3, 2000, August 6th. Chato Hayek, Bach Area, August 6th, 2000. Um, what are you calling this? What is this? The end of something? C and D phase of the house. Yeah. Building. Building. Of building three. Starting on the south side, moving up towards the west. Towards the north, back down towards in the east corner, two platforms that have been excavated, two burials found, the top one this year, sorry last year, the bottom one this year, rotating around. Sixth of August. Now, sixth of August, two thousand. Chatelhuyuk, Building Three, Level D and C. Go. Okay. So um, the reason we decided to stop at this level and do all this elaborate filming is that uh, we still have features and floors from the uh, early level, from the late. Sorry, here I begin from the late level, level D, and we have already exposed some uh, floors from level C, which is below D, and we can see in various pits that we have here, uh, levels uh, B and A as well. So uh, we want to film this in order to capture as much as possible of level D features and relationship to C features before we go further down. We still have many floors down to go through and we need to hurry up from this point on and so we might not have as much time to record things as we had before. So at this point we can still see in the house at least three well-defined areas, actually four well-defined areas and different, uh, there's difference between them. So one of them is the central part of, of the house and then the northern part of the house with features 162 and 173, the platforms, and this platform 170 also belongs to that. And then the southern half of the house, which we call the kitchen, uh, with the platform 169 and 167, and the central part of the kitchen. And then those are three areas, then central, north, and south. And in addition to that, we have this whole space 158, which is also um, complicated, but now we can see some relationship between 86 and uh, 158. So uh, we started first defining these phases in the building by different levels and uh, observing the differences between the different sets of floors. These are our levels are basically sets of floors that are well defined and that we differ from each other. So we began first with this a burial pit which is feature 617 and in that pit what we could see is that on the midden which is um, under this house we assume uh, we have one set of floors which are defined by uh, a white line at the bottom and a number of gray layers and the wine line on the top that's our uh, that's the beginning of our horizon a that's a from a to b right b is the top white line then we have b is a very thick horizon it, it has b floor over here and then it has uh, thick packing and very solid b2 floor 
uh, above this solid packing. And then what's interesting is this horizon of burning, which is basically the packing between B2 and C. There is this horizon of burning on top of which we have the floors that belong to C phase, which are very solid, thick, and made of white plaster on this platform and also on other platform in the north of the building. So this was the beginning, and then we went to our post-retrieval pit, which is our feature 602, mm -hmm. and um, looked at the horizons uh, or phases that we can see in that pit. And what we saw is, again, the same situation. We have the midden at the bottom, and then we have slightly thinner layer A with a nice white floor on top of it. And then we have B, which is a slightly different packing than over there in the previous pit. And on top of B, we have C, which is again this burnt horizon. We think that this is either a burnt horizon, horizon or packing made of uh, redeposited oven remains that come from some different part of the building. And then uh, on top of this uh, packing, we have again thick floors, which are C floors. And they end here at this line, roughly. And on top of that, we still have remains of D floor. Actually, no, they, I think they end. They I end. Think you just go, I think they end here. I think they okay, so off. it's possible that yeah. C ends here. Right. And from here yeah, up, expected. we have floors uh, D. Now, the situation in the burial pit feature 631 we have a slightly different situation. We have to explain this feature, but we can you can do it once. Action. Okay, so here in the feature uh, burial pit feature 631, uh, we, we can see some of the floor levels that we have seen in other pits, which is this top C floors, and then we can see the burned horizon that's under it or the burned packing. But then immediately below that, we see the um, uh, midden remains, which are lying on top of a, a clay or rather bricky uh, features, the remains of uh, the, the earlier house or something like that. So this pit cannot be uh, entirely uh, phased yet in relation to the other pits, but there are at least these top horizons or phases are present here as well. Yeah, you can do that. Do you want to do that? Do you want me to do the phases and okay. that stuff? And you can then talk about the burial. Because I'm going to be tired by the time I'm done. OK. The phases over there in the northern part of the building. Uh, and we saw that the platform floor, for instance, on this platform is phase C. And we could see that in the center we are on phase C floors in most parts, except for the bulks up here, and some little remains like this one island, which we don't know exactly which floor level that is, but it's one of the C uh, floors. Once we uh, settled that, we decided then to look at the southern part of the building, which is slightly more complicated. And uh, uh, the main source of information for this floor phasing comes from this post-retrieval pit, which is the feature um, 614. And in this pit, we have on the, on its sudden, in its southern wall, we have uh, the phasing of the platform that I'm sitting on. But in its uh, northern wall, we have the phasing of all the floors in the central part of the building. And on top of that, we see the relationship of the screen wall to the rest of it. So what we can see here are the same phases A, B, C, D. C and D, which is on, to on top here, and we can still see the uh, the higher upper layers that were on this platform that we have removed that also belong to D level. And um, in the northern uh, wall, we can see A, B, C, and D, which is on top, which is this top uh, floor that has been removed in most of, uh, of the central part of the building, but still exists here on this uh, step that, that actually separates the southern from the central part of the building. So since we are here on the D, we can see in this little section that uh, the screen wall is sitting on top of the floor that belongs to the D uh, phase. 
So the screen wall is either uh, also built in D phase or built slightly later. Actually, it has to be built in the beginning or, or at the end of the D phase. And um, D phase, D as in dog. And, um, <laughs> and one more uh, interesting thing is that the floors of the platform that I'm sitting on uh, seem to be going into this wall. I can see the continuation of the floor, which if true, might mean that even this internal wall is built on top of these floors, which would be on top of D phase in the building, which would mean then that this internal wall, which we assumed were originally here from the very beginning of the house, uh, were not, or were replaced, were here originally and then were cut down and replaced with these walls that were rebuilt in phase D. But this is something that we need to confirm through digging when we start removing the screen wall and looking at the relationship between the internal wall, feature 161, and the floors down here. So I am basically standing on the floors that are the, the last floors from the phase D in this building. And we can see here already C being visible in some of the cuts on the platform. And we can see that the level D floors that were on top of the platform before went down on its side and then under this feature. So this is all D and this is a floor that was built especially here in the kitchen area as a base on which we have these um, later features. No, earlier features, sorry, cut that. Um, and no, later features, what am I saying? I'm again in, muddle, in the muddle. And okay, these are then... Um, Yes, they are, they are later because they were the top of the platform. This is its edge and it went like that. We have removed it. Most of it was uh, destroyed actually in prehistory. We, because this platform was very, very heavily used and has a lot of little fire installations on it and, and platform makeup cuts and so forth. And so the, the floors that were on top of this platform, which you can still see here in these sections, went all the way up to here. And these are the floors that, the remains of the floors that we have removed. And we are down on the floors that belong to either C or, or they are just the end, or the, the very early D floors, which we, when, once we remove, we come down on this surface, which is most likely C surface. Okay, so the central part of the kitchen is still D level, but in the eastern part of the kitchen, this area, floor area, and uh, including the platform 167, we went further down and we are in the earlier phases, flow phases, and we are not yet sure about how to relate the two. This might be even B phase or something like that. We don't know yet. That remains to be solved l later. And the, the platform itself is also very complicated and problematic. This was most likely the entrance part. It has been replaced many times and rebuilt. We have remains of two possible post holes or holes which were holding the ladder, one of the posts for the ladder. Uh, assuming the other, the other um, ladder side was leaning against the wall. And um, so we have the, f the floors, the nice white floors and the cuts in the floors and all that. This all remains to be uh, s solved a little later. Uh, now, I, if I, I, I would like to go back to the central floors again and say that we have these floors are all C phase, the top ones including this one and that one and that one and they all seem to be at different levels and they are at different levels and that's because we believe that we have several floors in the C phase which can be here, seen here in the cross section and in different parts of this central uh, house floor we are at uh, these different floors actually and um, once we are at the bottom of the C floors we should be even in all the parts of the center. Now, um, a little more about the screen wall. So the screen wall was built in the 
very late stages of the house most likely. It was put on top of this platform in this area and then as I said on top of that uh, floor and probably a uh, platform on that side and um, in, in space 158 behind on the other side of the screen wall a lot of activity went on. Uh, we actually we might find the remains of the earlier phase of the screen wall itself because it seems that the screen wall is going deeper down here. So once we remove these later uh, pillars in addition to the screen wall and go deeper down here, we might still uh, find out that it, it had its early stage as well. So the f have we have several floors in 158. Um, of which the latest one can be found in the uh, very north and very south of the building, but in the central part we don't seem to have the very late use of the floor, just early use of the floor. Uh, certainly use of the floor that uh, went through A, B and C phase and then at D phase in this building, this most of the features here were covered with uh, shoring wall, including the features in the northern part, which are also covered with this shoring new wall that was put up on top of the earlier wall plaster and this feature 170, uh, one that goes all the way to here. So that was probably these were the features from either C phase or early D phase, and then in late D phase, uh, something happens, the collapse of the wall a west wall happens and they need to uh, shore up the, the screen wall and they stop using the central part of the space but they continue using the south with a niche in it, feature 607, and north with the bins that were in it. I think I can stop at this and then you can talk about what we found in where on the platform 173 and under the floor the wall uh, the east wall of, of the building there is uh, a feature that looked like a cut at the beginning and it might still be a cut but that we we thought was um, a, a sculpture retrieval or something like that uh, cut but it might also be something else which is an oven type of thing and we can see some traces possibly traces of burning on these bricks uh, if that is the case, that's also highly unusual to have it under the wall. One explanation would be that it is um, an oven that was cut into the wall, which was typical of Chatel Huyuk, but this would be highly unusual place for it in the north uh, east corner of the building. Another possibility is that this is uh, an oven from an earlier phase from the building that actually on top of which was built another building with these walls that, and that building would be the one that we have excavated so far, which would then make these white floors and everything below an earlier building underneath the one that we have excavated already. We hope that that's not the case, but there is a slight possibility. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um. Thank you, silence on normal set. One of the things that characterizes Chatel Huyuk houses, as we know from many examples, are the burials dug through the platforms and then covered over and uh, with a big um, lid, and um, that's the way that they buried their dead. And in this house also, we've started to come across such burials. The first one that we found was last year in um, this cut here, this was called feature 617, and um, that was taken out, it was a small boy, I think, or a small child, sorry, <laughs> in a basket. Um, and this year, when we came back, we uh, almost immediately, as we started to scrape down to the upper part of the D level, um, we came across this wonderful grave with its lid and um, it actually showed up very beautifully black because it's dug through the black midden down here. It showed up black against the, um, against the white of the platform. And I don't know whether that was 
intentional or not, but it was sure was impressive. So then Bashak and Laurie and Tonya excavated this um, skeleton down there, a robust male, I believe, right, of middle years, <laughs> in good health, so far as we can tell. Anyway, so um, he filled this grave with the skull at this end. We've got lots of video of that, so we won't bore you with that. But anyway, what we have to start looking for in these pits is that the burials, there's not just one burial under the platforms, but many. So you have to keep an eye out for burial pits, dug into burial pits, dug into burial pits. And that looks as though that's what we have in both of these um, platforms. And the way we try to find those is by looking at the cuts themselves, I mean, at the, yeah, the profiles of the cuts themselves. And we can see in this pit, uh, feature 617, for example, that there was a cut that went from there all the way around to here, a cut right the way through the floor levels from, the, um, from this C, big C uh, floor. Uh, one of them that we um, found in this cut was this funny kind of, um, ow, shit, this funny small uh, straight-sided oval-ended or whatever um, pit. You can see its lid here. And so far, uh, Laurie has found only disarticulated small bone, bones of a small person. We don't know whether young or just small. But anyway, that's what we found. So we're assuming there's something deeper here. What she'll do is to excavate the whole, the, the whole thing. We just took down the bulk in order to expose the rest of the, of the grave. This is called feature 634. And then in this pit is yet another probable burial pit dug through perhaps even the earliest of the burial pits that was dug and we can see it um, possibly its upper part in the collapse over here. I'm not quite sure whether that circular pit is perhaps another grave. Is that possible? Another grave that's dug through all of these other late, or rather these other later graves were dug all the way through it. It look, if that is a gra uh, grave, that would probably be the earliest. And in this, perhaps the middle, and then the one we found last year would be the latest. Over here in this platform, we can see a similar kind of cut in the side of the, the grave pit, the burial pit, from here to here. And then on the surface, as we cleaned it today, we could see a kind of lid material that we're beginning to recognize now, going in this sort of area like that. So this will be the next one that we excavate. And we can see, in fact, it's um, in the yellow layer down there. There's, um, it's still going down black on that side. Um, whether we've got another one on this side, I'm not sure yet, but I wouldn't be surprised, an early one. So other, pos ow, other possible <laughs> burial pits are possibly a big series of cuts in the northern part of the floor, the central floor area here, especially, I, I think this is suspicious. This is a pit that's been covered with um, or has a fill that includes a great deal of floor material. And that's the kind of thing that we're looking for in the upper part of the, of the burial pits. Um, it's possible that this is also part of some kind of burial pit. So that again will be our next one. Laurie will go on to that. Um, over in this platform is a prime candidate for a wonderful big grave, big double grave. Everybody is skeptical except me. I know it's here, right where I'm standing. And I bet you at the end of this week, we shall find that this is a big double burial. But anyway, at the moment, they hid it so well that it's defying any kind of definition by us. Schluss. Thank you, Laurie. Something down there also. People need to be training it. Go. There is another possible grave in Space 158, although it's a bit difficult to, again, you know, really believe that this such a horrible-looking cut could actually house a burial under it. 
This is not so carefully hidden, so it's, it's really an obvious cut here, but still, that's the kind of thing they may have done in a hurry. You know, put the person in, dump the earth on top. Whereas over there, we've got very carefully finished burials, all whited over, and so that they're quite um, nice and sealed, I think the word would be. Nobody gets out. <laughs>